Hey Viking Nation, welcome to this week's episode of N3. I'm Parker. And I'm Jacob. Each year the improved culture within our school drives students and athletes to succeed. A result of that has already been shown by team and individual records this fall. The student section has been an intimidating force for all visiting teams and has really brought the term home field advantage to life. We take a closer look into what truly makes the shipyard so unique. Every year, the graduating shipyard leaders pass on the torch to upcoming seniors who they think are a good fit for the role. So last year's shipyard leaders were looking at a lot of people in the student section and seeing who could lead them the best and take care of everybody to have a good time and I ended up getting a call from one of them and the rest is history. At the beginning of the school year before school started, um, me and a few other people got a text from Colby, Whitney, and Trevor, the former shipyard leaders, and they texted us saying that we were now the shipyard leaders for the 2020-2021 um, school year. There are many different responsibilities of being a shipyard leader, and each senior is a different piece of the puzzle. My role right now for football games is the flag bearer. I was given the flag and my goal is to run around at halftime, wave it around when we score, and get people going. My role as a shipyard leader, um, we run the student section for each game. We post all the themes, we let everybody know the themes for each game, whether it be football, volleyball, softball. Being a shipyard leader gives these students an opportunity to not only go to the games and support the team, but also to be a leader to their peers. It's a lot different than sitting, just being there in the student section because you gotta say chance, you got to make stuff up, you got to get people going so they're into the game and supporting our team. When you're a shipyard leader, you're actually the person that starts each chant and um, is getting everybody hyped so that everybody comes to the games. Each student participates in the shipyard for different reasons and has unique goals for themselves and others. Some goals we seek are mainly for me just to everyone have a great time and to support our team and hopefully help our team towards a win. My goal is to just make sure that everybody's having a good time and that um, the people playing the sport know that they um, have encouragement. Each game, the shipyard leaders choose a different theme that allows students to dress up and come support the team. Usually we're going to be looking ahead in the schedule, make sure there's no important dates or anything that we need to like correlate the themes with. Most time it's just random. Yeah, I have a Pinterest board that I go on and I pick th themes from. and. Um, us shipyard leaders, we have this group chat that we text in and we always um, make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to themes and who's going to tweet out um, what we're doing. At each game, the shipyard leaders lead cheers and chants to keep the crowd and team spirit high. It consists of me yelling, excuse me, excuse me, and then everyone will start barking. <laughs> I don't really have a favorite cheer or chant. My favorite thing is, um, I just got to recently do it this year, is holding the flag and every time we get a touchdown, just uh, um, waving the flag. With many responsibilities as a shipyard leader, we go more into depth about which responsibilities specifically do they enjoy the most. Favorite part is just having a good time, being there in the mix with everybody and just making games a lot more fun. My favorite part about ship, being a shipyard leader is um, being able to um, pick the chance that we do and pick all the themes, so knowing the themes and um, having everybody follow those themes. Man, I'd hate to be a visiting team this year. Yeah, no kidding. Of course, with the shipyard comes the best band in the land. Let's take a look into how the band is restructured in the COVID era. Before the 2020 marching season, the Northwest Band had a head start on what to expect of the new normal. I'm Mr. Fanstill, and I am the Director of Instrumental Music here at Northwest. I uh, also sit on a statewide board that uh, monitors some band activities through the, through the uh, well, marching band especially, and so I had known about some conversations that were going on, especially with the State Marching Festival, and so um, my wheels have been turning since, well, really about April. One of these expectations was a shortened competition season, with both familiar and new events being scheduled. We, we are at two competitions, and we, we originally had five uh, well, performance days. We had started with the State Fair. State Fair decided they were not going to have marching bands uh, this year, so we didn't get to perform at State Fair this year. Um, next was supposed to have been Columbus, and we are going to Columbus. Harvest of Harmony had made the decision to cancel, um, but Aurora is picking up a competition that day, so we'll be going to uh, Aurora for the Aurora Marching Invitational, I think is what they're calling it. The band leadership team, faced with heavier responsibilities, are aware of the adversity they face this season. 
band camp started a lot later than what it used to. It was towards the end of July. So that was a lot different. We had less uh, band camp to go through. It hasn't been too different, honestly. It's been like almost the same, just trying to enforce like the social distancing and then the mask is pretty much it. But other than that, it was fine. With COVID-19 guidelines affecting spectatorship at sporting events, this posed an interesting concern for Pep Band. Pep Band this year, we are obviously limited to capacity, uh, whatever the uh, directed health measure is uh, in the gym. Um, so we've decided to split into two Pep Bands, um, uh, half and half basically. So I tried to make it as even as possible, a first trumpet on this band and a first trumpet in this band and right on down the line um, so that we can keep our sound as consistent as possible. We also went down in numbers, so we have like eight, um, around 80, 90 members. So we split the band in half, and then half of them go to one volleyball game or basketball game, and then the other half go to the other one, and then they alternate. And the drum majors get to play this year, which is super cool. Despite current circumstances, the Northwest Band is still as excited as ever to create yet another superior season. They've been really good about it. They've been really adaptive, and like, if anything new comes up, like the mandated mask, you know, halfway through, they took that very well, wore the masks, and you know, still kept playing. I'm very proud of the band in the way that they've really not tried to dwell on what could have been, but to move on into the future and, and just do what we, what we can with uh, the availability that we have in front of us. The band puts in a lot of hard work and dedication that all of Northwest appreciates. Have you met our new teachers this year? Yeah, they seem like an awesome group of teachers that we are excited to have. Let's take a closer look at some of these new faces. For this year's school year, we welcome six new teachers to our Viking community and ask them a series of questions to learn a little bit about each one. I'm Mr. Otto. I teach uh, academic foundations and communication foundations for right now. I'm Mr. Lambert. I teach ninth grade world history and 11th grade American history. So my name is Jared Hansen and I teach Drama One here at Northwest. And I'm also the accompanist for all of the choirs here. My name is Katie Horning and I teach Intro to Agriculture, uh, Animal Science, Companion Animals, Horticulture, Wildlife Management, and next semester I'll teach Vet Science. My name is Carol Bynes. I teach Reading Essentials and Community Experiences. Several new faculty members returned to their roots, coming back to a familiar place to work. I wanted to come home. I had been in Kansas for six years, and I've got two kids that live in Lincoln. Well, I'm actually a Northwest alum, graduated 2002. So um, when Cindy Coe retired last year, it was a pretty good opportunity for me to come back home again. I have family members who teach here, and family members who've gone to school here, and I had an opportunity. Some of the new faces at Northwest got themselves associated with the athletics and activities they are passionate about. I'm involved with uh, all the choirs obviously, but then all of the show choirs too, and that's all the outside things that go along with that, be it competitions, um, just performances around town, that sort of thing. I am involved in the FFA activities here at Northwest High School. I coach middle school football and I am an assistant wrestling coach for high school. With teaching multiple classes, these teachers get to see different faces throughout the day. This is just the motivation that they need. Uh, what motivates me most is the students. Um, just seeing their faces and getting to interact with them and seeing how they like to tell me, update me on their weekend events. and Helping students achieve their goals. Doing the best I can for my kids. Um, it sounds kind of cliche and kind of hokey, but I feel like this is what I was put on this earth to do. To learn some more about each of our new faculty members, we hear from several of them about what they enjoy doing outside of their classroom. Some hobbies I have outside of school, I love to read. Um, I'll pretty much read almost anything, and I love to go camping. I'm a pretty avid skier, snowboarder. Um, biking during the summer. I keep buying old houses that need help and um, I've gotten very good at drywalling and doing some electrical and some plumbing. I'm playing with my dog, racing, and playing video games with some friends. I play a lot of disc golf, hacky sack, and cornhole. Friendly welcome to all of our new teachers this year. We wish you the best of luck for the rest of the school year. What are you doing? I'm ordering a new Travis Scott burger for six bucks. Dang, that sounds really good right about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
welcome back, order whenever you're ready. You know why I'm here. Yeah, the side. I'm digging this. Oh, I think it's gonna be good. Oh, it's bacon! I think it's gonna be it's awesome. It's gonna be bacon good. Oh, that was not a good joke. <laughs> start eating? All right. Just start eating. It's only gonna get colder the longer I sit That here, is true. So. so let's get a first glimpse of this, and already, I mean, you know, it looks good. It doesn't quite look like what's in the commercials, but I mean, everyone lies in their profile picture. Let's get that straight. Well, I went to, I'm hungry, so. I'm just excited I saw the bacon. Mm-hmm. Mm we just eat and talk, or what do we do here? Wow. <laughs> you eat and talk? That is really good. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> is it good? I'm scared. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving the bacon. I'm so excited. I am too. Hmm. Oh, it tastes like a McDonald's burger to me. I think we all know Beyonce is like the highest level. This burger's like right below that. Like immediately you get all the flavors in there. The lettuce is nice and refreshing to the meat and cheeses in there. And the guy's name is what? Travis somebody? Travis Scott. Well, Travis Scott, you mm -hmm. got good taste, man. Mm -hmm. It's Have not, you ever like listened his, to like any of his songs before? That's his rapper name. Yeah, I've listened to Sicko Mode. Sicko Mode, that's yep. it? Everyone's listening to Sicko Mode. It goes like bomb, 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 and then it starts going, right? Let's take a look at the um, recommended barbecue sauce with fries. Pretty sure old uh, T. Scott, as I call him, because we're close like that, takes a good old-fashioned stab at it. I like, we got our ambiance here. We got our, we got got our, our flowers for our date. Yeah. Pay for it. No. Us teachers and Travis, like, we're very similar to Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. Teachers make very close to what Travis Scott makes. So, yeah. everybody that tells you teachers don't make good money, liars. <clears throat> I can see that. And of course, what McDonald's meal wouldn't be complete? Take two. Without a nice Sprite. It's lit! I know where I'm going for lunch. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this episode. I'm Jacob. And I'm Parker. See you guys next week.